Hello Internet! Artemis Bregano here and uh, all the green around me, as you can guess, it's Greg's, Greg's products and my personal favorite in their collection is the Trium Airbrush, which is available in uh, Gravity Fit Inside. Okay, so two versions, there are a few different packages I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, Gravity versus side, I personally prefer Gravity Fit just because it's less clean. I'll just show you an uh, example of this little box. So for uh, for gravity, you just have a cup on top of the airbrush and go straight to the you know the material section and airbrush on the side feed. You kind of have this uh, 90 degree additional angle for cleaning and uh, I mean I'm just personally not a big fan of it. But I love the airbrush and if you are using a lot of if you paint a lot of you know horizontal or uh, you need to put the ceilings hoods on it like not removing from the cars, too lazy there. That's a good thing because you can adjust actually your position of your cup. So if you're spraying on uh, something on the ground level, you can turn it this way or you can do the opposite for you know, spraying something on top of you. Um, some people love it. I mean, it's a just question of personal preferences. I prefer gravity fit by the airbrush itself. So those two really nice, uh, let's say like plastic cases. They're designed specifically for uh, automotive refinish kind of uh, retouch uh, repair guys. So whoever does, you know, the collision repairs, that's product designed for them as far as I know. It comes with the one of the best products actually from the Grex as well, besides the airbrush, the GMAC. Really good work in uh, adjusting, wire adjusting with the quick uh, coupling on it. So that's a pretty interesting set. Small cup, large cup, you know, uh, you have uh, your standard uh, standard route spray air cap and you have the flat air cap of course which works perfectly on cracks and I'll talk about it a little bit later. Uh, same kit with a gravity fit and those, like I said, you're, uh, if you're an automotive you probably want one of those but I also recommend those for any, any uh, guy who's looking or you know, working on the larger scale, big models, you know, dune murals so something like that. Really interesting, really good kits. More of the standard, little cheaper version is a uh, two airbrush again, the side feed and the gravity feed. I'll show you this one, it's open. Uh, you have less equipment here, I mean, it's the same airbrush, a different type of cups. You have three of uh, metal cups, a different size. You don't have you don't have the flat spray air cap attached. You gotta purchase proper. Uh, pro purchase it additionally, but I really recommend it. Really, really nice spray and flat cap. The airbrush itself uh, with the handle has come standard, so it sits really good in the hand and uh, a little soft uh, soft material on the trigger, so I guess better, better connection a little bit. I'm, I'm not sure if I like it or not. If I just want a straight metal, I can remove it. If you don't, it's kind of airbrush. Let me... forgot to tell if you have no compressor at the moment. If you're just looking for purchasing the whole kit from the beginning, they do have uh, really nice sets like GCK05 checkout on spray gunner, includes compressor, some accessories, air hose, like everything you need to start spraying. So these two are more of the standards use, you know, the scale model is regular fine art, whatever you wanted to use it for. Uh, 0.3 millimeters, the two versions I have here is a uh, TG free and a TS free. They also available uh, this kind of kits as a 0.2 and 0.5. So it's going to be TG free, I mean TG2 and uh, TG5. And for additional purchase, you can get 0.7 with that, which I personally love. And I, I'll show you some uh, uh, spray, some testing I did with it. I took actually special color, you know, to much stain style from the Cromayers. Uh, it's like CA024 spotted green. Oh, back. And I did some spraying. That's an airbrush I used. You can tell it's a little, uh, little dirty. We use it here for uh, some uh, some projects. And uh, I gotta admit, I had no time to clean it after I got done. I just went doing something else. So I just put some of the 408 Cretex uh, Restore into it and I hoped it will survive, which we'll see. I mean, I didn't spray it after that. We'll take it apart in a second and we'll see what's inside. So the spray results, I put all the sizes, all nozzle sizes I could find for it. So 0.2, I wasn't preparing for this test much, I just uh, put a 0.2 the first time in there. For 0.2 you didn't have the flat 
uh, spray cap, so it's only around, and that's what you can get from it. Um, I mean, that's okay results. I really don't see the reason to put a 0.2 in this kind of airbrush. It's not your detail airbrush, uh, so maybe somebody needs it. Um, not for me. Standard 0.3. So this, uh, you can see the round, uh, it's the standard round air cap. And you can get decent fine line and uh, pretty good control I mean, for a trigger airbrush, all those lines here. But the best thing I like about it is flat flat air cap. So that's kind of far, uh, fine you can see from in the pattern. And for, uh, for a feel like that, so I just take this background feel pretty nice. I mean, uh, you can see a little uh, deeper color here, but it's probably just because I went a little slower here get to prepare myself, but I don't like it. I mean, it's a decent uh, size of their fan spray for 0.3 millimeter, and I think it's the only airbrush in the market. I might be mistaken with a 0.3 fan air cap. I don't know, tell me if I'm mistaken, but uh, I, I did enjoy it, I mean, really much. 0.5 is you're getting more into the solid feel and uh, a little bigger, wider the spray from the flat pattern. And B round still keeps kind of uh, well, I mean, it's not detail airbrush 0.5, but yeah, you can get some real fine uh, line from it. Not real fine, but, you know, define enough to do some murals and, uh, you know, paint on the cars. Uh, 0.7, well, that, that's what I love. I mean, I uh, just sprayed on the paper and uh, might be too much pain here for uh, for a bit, because you can see it's starting all deforming, but that's that's wide, okay. So for an airbrush, I mean, that's it's entering like the minigun uh, field here. This is kind of uh, this place. I'll just test it on the second page, see how it's going, the feel, and you see where we're at. Solid color, so there's no breaks, and uh, I like it. I mean, really, 0.7 is what I would get for this airbrush for myself because I would use it as a you know, much smaller air pressure need for it. Much less air than the normal, you know, gun, the mini gun you need for this kind of uh, product. The tritium is 0.7, but as you can see, as I really love it. I mean, it's a white spray pattern uh, for car finish. You know, if you're doing a primer for the heavens, something like that. Any small items are really, really handy, really nice. We got a little pen leak here, but again, uh, first time I put 0.7 in it. I tested it a few times with different paints. I mostly test paints with it with uh, 0.5 and yeah, that's, you can see I have more experience with this size. But when you're getting to 0.7, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep one set for myself to use this airbrush. So that's what can you expect to get from the airbrush itself and let me put it aside. Make some space here and uh, we will take apart this guy right here. So I'm gonna borrow from this box. This little wrench, which comes standard with uh, all the airbrushes again, and uh, well, let's see what it's made of. So first of all, since I know there's uh, there was some dry paint in it, I'm gonna check if you can uh, feel any like tension when you're getting the needle out from the back. Don't don't pull it too hard because it can uh, damage the seal inside. This one actually surprisingly going out well, and there's no pain in it. Means thanks to Credex for 008, really, really works, but we'll see. I shall need to get some uh, wipes. Um, I need some wrenches, so I'll open the little box here and prepare some tools. Going for there, that's your iCut. The fan air cap actually made of uh, two parts, which kind of convenient for uh, cleaning it. You know, have two parts instead of one, and that's the base, so the kind of adapter you need to put for the fan air cap, and that's all can come in standard when you buy the kit, uh, like the TF, uh, TFK, I think, the kits, or it's come standard with the MF sets. Normally on this airbrush, actually I'm taking apart one I used, but I used it with the uh, last time I used it with a flat air cap, so it would be the wrong one here, but it's pretty much the same. So you have the needle protection, which is actually a magnet. You will probably can see it here on my uh, handle. 
this little protection for uh, round type air cap and it's, it's magnetic so it's the same as in the back can go in the back of the airbrush here it's magnetic I mean cool feature you can lose them if you're, you know, drop the airbrush they tend to fall but really convenient in the day when you work it but anyways uh, let's remove the rest of it so for a nozzle I will use this wrench it came with a kit I like that this uh, they use this uh, thread feed uh, thread type nozzles like most of the manufacturers like Japanese you know they actually made in Taiwan but they have them larger size so it's not as easy to lose and it's uh, much harder I guess to break it when you put it back which happens a lot with you know the these kind of airbrushes. So next I would uh, can remove the cap of course. You can see all the paints still here. I'm sure I didn't bring any wipes but I might need them later. This metal section because this airbrush is not new I can just uh, remove it by hand. Sometimes you might need the, the soft grip pliers like that to get it off but still after you've done it once you'll need just your fingers you know to put it back standard here you have the spring you have uh, a little chuck put it aside i need to remove the handle in order to proceed with the rest of them taking apart just so you know you don't have to go any deeper if you do like regular cleaning and maintenance i mean that's pretty much what you need for everyday basis even the nozzle don't have to go out of the airbrush every day. You can clean it from here, you can uh, clean all the back, you know, pull out the needle and uh, give it a good clean. But if you want to take it apart and uh, do deep maintenance, that's what it happen. You have this little nut and the handle comes up, which I need to clean. Then you do have a bunch of the parts here, which one by one will be taken up. Is this wrench. So first of all, this your it's actually your air valve nut or screw probably. I'm not sure what you call it, but yeah. When you remove that, as a normal airbrush, you'll have your uh, air valve spring behind it and huge size air valve rod. That part also removable if you want to like completely disassemble it, see what they're made of. There's nothing interesting there if you don't, except for uh, some you know, some situation when you had a lot of solvent there and you got this uh, little o-ring all disappeared or you got a paint inside you need to clean it. There's no need to disassemble that, but anyways, this little uh, piston in there and the part itself, whatever you want to call it. Inside there is a little part which is one of the hardest to put back on any brush, but anyway, we'll take it off. Just so you guys know, let me see if this is right size. Yeah. So I need a little screwdriver to take this uh, little screw off, which is uh, it's kind of fixing on the place. Another screw, which is inside an airbrush, and you can use the back of this uh, tool to unscrew this one. Comes out pretty easily. And that's what holds your second spring in place. So on this kind of airbrush, the trigger type, you'll have uh, two springs instead of one normal inside of uh, the airbrush body. I mean, beside the airwell spring, of course. And the second spring is actually, well, it's kind of, it's still double action airbrush. It's what I would call double dependent action. So uh, yeah, this is the second spring. When you uh, start pulling a trigger, you get in air first, and then if you pull it further, you get in paint. So the first spring works only for uh, the air section, and the second spring starts uh, working when you're getting to the, the material, actually. Uh, oops. Yeah, this one a little dirty. Uh, pay attention on, uh, on the tritium. You have to have some grease here, and I'm not talking about like the liquid uh, and the lubricants, you have to get some grease. Uh, I'm not sure if Greg sells any, I don't know, I have here on my desk the one from uh, the maintenance kits, which comes with GSA airbrushes. But this part works against another metal 
piece which we're about to pull out of the airbrush and it is important to keep it lubricated there yeah so that's the one I really had to put back in, uh, in place got two seals in it um, normally if you're uh, you know working in good condition in a clean airbrush every day not allowing the paint to go inside your uh, air valve is pretty hard to do with this airbrush I mean if even if you have uh, the needle seal worn out it will go out here and on the sides not gonna go inside your air valve so I don't think you know most of you will need to go on this tip and uh, pull this part out but in case you need that's how it's done and that's what I was talking about referencing two metal pieces going you know one against another gonna have the grease here to keep it all uh, lubricated so it's moving nice and not scratching each other to go further you can of course remove uh, change the screwdriver can remove the trigger okay I'll just put this one so you just a little screw in there taking a trigger up and the last piece is which we just mentioned their actual uh, needle seal and that's the part I really don't like about Greg's uh, needle seal didn't come up. This never happens. So normally you just pull this part out and the needle seal goes right behind it. It's a Teflon seal. So you can use the solvent paints, no problem. Just keep them out of the air sections of the airbrush. And yeah, inside their airbrush body. I'll try to use one of those no name tools for it. There's a Teflon ring, which is always pain in an airbrush to get them out because of the shape, I guess. I'm not sure what's happening, but yeah, it's every time this airbrush apart, getting into this, but it's almost out. Oh no, no, I thought it's almost out. Yeah, I can see it now. It's trying to get out of there. Here we go. So that's, uh, it's really easy to put it back. It's hard to get it out some, somehow, but you can see there's some paint on it. So uh, it's a pretty bad sign, my bit stain. I mean, it's, this airbrush been uh, in service for a while here. Maybe just cleaning or maybe it needs a little tidying. So it doesn't mean if you have the air paint coming from the back of the airbrush that the seal is, uh, is done. Sometimes you can just, uh, you know, adjust this, tighten this screw a little bit and it fixes the problem. But yeah, sometimes you come to the place when you need to remove it. So normally it just goes out like this and you can put that in like this. Uh, so I think that's it. That's all I want to tell about the airbrush. I'll include a video where I put it all together. So just watch until the end if you're uh, in the same position like I'm in right now and think you have to put it together. But again, I think it's a really good airbrush for its purpose of so trigger type and using with a flat air cap. That's a killer. I mean, with 0.7, you're doing a lot of feelings. With 0.5, it's a pretty good option. 0.3, something is not available for uh, for most of other brands, as far as I know. And uh, it's it's we gotta be, you know, we gotta have some. For most application, I can think about of airbrushing and from scale modeling to doing mural arts. You 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 find the application for this airbrush. All right. I hope it was helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching.